let's start our practice of yoga for arthritis on our backs. Maybe with the knees bent or the legs stretched out, find that relaxing opening Shavasana shape. Take three deep breaths. Feel free to just use your nose or blow the air out of the mouth on the exhale. We'll be focusing on our hands at first. So begin to roll the wrists a little bit and then begin to open the arms out wide so they're spread out beside you. Palms are up toward the sky. If you need to readjust your feet, please do so. Your knees can feel free to bend. Open your fingers as wide as they can go. Spread them apart. Even lift the heel of the hand slightly to stretch into the forearm. Take a deep breath. And on the exhale, allow the fingers to soften and gently curl toward the middle of your palm, but stick your thumbs out as if you're hitchhiking and tip them backwards, getting that stretch into the forearm again, and then roll the thumbs forward. The whole arm is gonna follow. Tip the thumbs all the way toward the floor forward and then roll them all the way back. And we're just gonna do this one more time. We're moving all the way up the arm, rolling the thumbs, good. And then when your palms are up again, open the fingers wide, spread them out, and then start to roll through the finger joints. And then curling the fingers in like claws and then opening them again, just taking those joints. The hands are one of the main places where we find arthritis. Just getting the juice into the joints is one of the best ways to help with that. Begin an elbow bending so that your hands are now up in the air. And then begin to reach the arms straight up high toward your ceiling. Roll out the wrists, big, big movements. Keep the hands open as you roll the wrists in one direction. And then feel free to keep them open or curl them into gentle fists as you roll them the other direction. This just slightly changes the sensation, good. Now we're gonna bring the palms together so the hands are still straight up toward the sky and then press the palms together so you zip up all of the knuckle joints and the pad of the hands and then spread the fingertips away from each other. Yes, good, deep breath. And then relax and spread the fingers out, wiggling them, wiggling them, opening the hands and laying them down by your sides, good. If you haven't bent your knees yet, go ahead and do that. Bending the knees, putting the feet on the floor. Rock the knees a little bit side to side just to see how they feel. Getting into the hips just gently. Coming back to center, let your knees stay bent if you like that, maybe even knock them together. Take the arms over your head, up in the air, and then down to the floor over your head so that the fingers are touching the floor and then bring them back down by your sides and do this a couple of times. This is a range of motion straight out in front of the body and over. And you can add a little extra stretch in the ribs. You can bend the elbows as much as you like with your nose pointing straight up in the air. And just one more time and this time let's leave the arms up over the head on the floor and stretch out through one leg and begin to roll the ankle and the foot of that one leg. Feel free to bend the knee and make some big swooping circles with your foot with your knee bent. Good. Just getting into the joint, go in one direction and the other. If you prefer to have your arms back down by your sides at any time, you can place them back there. Eventually, when this foot feels all tingly and warmed up, you can plant that foot back on the floor and try the other one. Bending the ankle, rolling it out, and then the knee joint. Always looking for that moderation. As you're moving here, notice if there's a little bit of air under your back at some point along the spine. That's good. A little bit of a pelvic rock right there. Let's plant this foot back down and take a few pelvic tilts. Really rock the tailbone forward on the floor, maybe even 
crawl your shoulders up a little bit so you get your ribs really lifted up away from the mat. And then as you're flattening your back, lower your arms back down by your sides. Keep the low back connected to the mat, but you can roll the tailbone up and even squeeze the glutes away from the floor slightly. And take the arms back over the head to help add to that lift in the ribs. Deep breath. On the exhale, lowering the arms and flattening the back and rolling the tailbone up, squeezing the glutes. Good. You should get a slight stretch in the quads when you squeeze the glute up. Good. One more time. Arms over, the belly rocks up, ribs are lifting away from the mat. And exhale the arms back down. Good. Let's go ahead and bring the knees into the chest. Give ourselves a little break. Rock side to side. Just enjoy the feeling on the sides of the back. Feel free to rock all the way over from one side to the other. Your elbow can help kind of prop you and stop you and then roll you the other way. Your head can go too. Good. And back to center. We're going to lift both feet up high in the air. Flex the foot, push the heels up, toes are curling down toward your nose. And then squeeze your toes, kind of curl just the toes back toward the foot, good. And then flex the toes and curl the toes. And we're just getting into the toes. And you can add the hands as well here, opening and closing the palms again with your toes, just encouraging them. <laughs> and then eventually opening the toes, trying to roll through those toe joints. Great job. Pull one of your knees into your chest again. Really squeeze the leg down, holding onto the shin. The other leg is straight up in the air. Let's make some big circles with the foot on the ceiling. Really moving the hips, uh, the femur bone in the hip socket. This is one of the major things we'll be doing throughout class today is just massaging inside of that hip bone. If you've gone one direction, go the other direction a couple times. Take a deep breath in as you come back to center. And on the exhale, take a long time to lower that leg all the way down to the floor and let it hover right above the floor. Take some breaths with the leg hovering. Try to soften your low back. See if you can kind of allow the squeezing knee to get a little deeper into the ribs. And one more deep breath. Take a full breath in, and as you exhale that breath, pull the long leg back up in the air and let the knee come into the chest. Good, rock a little bit side to side. Coming back to center, we'll push the other leg up in the air. Now we're holding the shin down of that first leg that was long. Move into flexing maybe, take a few deep breaths, and then start those big leg circles. In one direction, you're making those big swooping circles on the on the ceiling. One direction and the other. Coming back to center, take that deep breath in, push up through the heel. On your exhale, lower slowly to hover above the floor. And of course, if hovering doesn't feel quite right, you can allow the leg to rest on the ground. Take another deep breath in, and on the exhale, you'll lift this leg up high in the air and squeeze the knee into the chest. Good. Rocking once more. Maybe make some big circles with the knees together, rolling them around, kind of massaging that low back and getting into your core a little bit. Allow the feet to slowly float to the floor, letting them go flat and rock the knees all the way to one side. Let's take the arms out wide, breathe deep into the ribs. And rock over to the other side. Bringing the knees back. Plant your feet about hips width apart. We're going to move into bridge pose. So the arms can stay wide if you don't mind that. I like to have mine down by my side. Palms flat. Roll those shoulder blades back and begin to lift the hips. Squeeze the glutes. And we're going to stay for a little while here. Make sure there's nothing under your head that you have that little air pocket in the nice little curve of your neck. 
and then start to soften the face, the neck, the shoulders, but feel the strength in the core here. The gentle squeeze in the glutes, the stretch across the quad, the thighs. If there's any pain in your knees, continue to walk your feet forward. If you'd like to add a little work here, maybe just inchworm the toes of one foot slightly ahead of the other foot and you can feel the weight shift into the leg that has the foot closer to you. And then inchworm that foot back in and slide the other one out. <laughs> Keep breathing. Your breath will be an indication of how much work you're doing. And when you get tired, you'll know when it's time to come down. Just take your time. Moving from bridge pose into a resting position whenever you like. When you're resting, really breathe deep in through the nose and out the mouth. Maybe take a few pelvic tilts if that feels good. And we're going to go into bridge pose one more time. Of course, you can be going in and out of the pose as often as you like. You could just be lifting, holding for a count of maybe two, and then lowering, or whichever works best for you. We're just breathing. I like to add the breath, pushing it down into the belly. Knowing when it's time for you to come out. When you come out this time, maybe keep the knees bent for a moment or two and then start to reach out long with your legs on your mat. See how that feels, maybe rock your feet, kind of flop them open and close a little bit. The arms can lift over the head one more time toward the floor, full body stretch, feels so good. And then begin to bend your knees as you roll over toward the camera, onto your side. And we'll bend our knees at a full 90 degree angle first, stacking one on top of the other. We're going to do a clamshell series, getting keep continuing to work and warm the hip joint out. Take your knees and point them on a diagonal down from your hip rather than straight out. Take the top toes and plant them on the floor a little ways in front of the shin of that bottom leg. Kind of start to bend the knee. You might have to slide your, knee, your toes up a little bit and then start to lower the knee and lift the knee of that top leg. So we've kind of adjusted and you'll have to find your own place where it feels okay for you to be doing this. If you get a cramp in your foot, just take a break, roll it out and remember to drink more water. <laughs> Maybe just a couple of times watching for that growing warmth in that top hip, the hand in front of you helping stabilize, good. And then pick the toe up and tap it to the floor. Let it come down behind the bottom leg and lift and lower the knee again. And you just find a spot on the floor that feels like it'll work for you and your low back. You should be feeling this moves up into that low back and it's strengthening up that quad. Good. Just a couple of times. I never count. It's really individual how many and how fast and slow we go. Eventually, you'll pick the leg up, keep it in its bent position, and imagine that you have a wall right at the end of your mat that you can tap your toe onto, and then lift and lower just the knee. Again, keeping the toe fairly stationary. Good, this should be a little bit more difficult than the other positions. You might only do a couple of these movements, and then you'll bring your knees back together and take a rest. <laughs> When you feel good, you can roll yourself over to your other side, or if you're like me and you wanna keep the camera in front of you, maybe push up, lean back, swing those legs around. I'm just realizing that we all have to do this because we're all looking at a camera. And then settle yourself back on the other side. I can even feel the soreness in that hip a little bit, just that deep muscle tissue being massaged in there. Again, if you'd like to keep your knees straight out and do this, you totally can. I like to move my knees down on more of a diagonal. Tap the front toes to the floor with the knees bent. See how it feels adjusting it so the knee can stay bent and the knee begins to lift and lower 
moving that hip. Listening to the sound of your breath. Notice if you begin to breathe through your mouth, maybe take a break so that you can bring your breath back into your nose. That just keeps it nice and slow. And you all know where we're going. You can stay here in this position until you feel ready to tap the toe behind the leg. Feel free to take a break if you need one. When you feel like you've had enough at this point, you'll lift the whole leg, keeping the knee bent, the toes pointed, and lift and lower the knee, trying to keep the toes kind of in the same spot in the air at the end of, <laughs> toward the end of your mat. It's just so hard to cue. If you feel that you're starting to frown, smile a little bit and then you can rest whenever you're finished. Whew, maybe even massage that hip joint a little bit with your hand. You can really feel that socket doing its work. Good. Thank you for doing yoga for arthritis with me. I hope to see you again soon. Namaste.